Hey, welcome back to another video of the V Brown Bag Build Day here at Revelo. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about a, a user story and what it really means to the underlying infrastructure. And I'm joined again by Amit to talk about this. Was a, a we were talking just before about this large global training organisation that is all over the place in terms of where they deliver. That week by week they could be delivering training everywhere using. Right. The Revelo platform. Just what kind of things go on with that? Right. So so far, these training organizations had to actually move racks with servers to some parts of the world, to Australia and to Singapore and to Europe, just to start their training course in that specific area. So that would be a sort of two week lead time as a minimum if you're shipping racks full of equipment from. Basically, to it get between courses of for course. each piece of equipment, that would cost a lot too. Of course, not to talk about the manpower that needs to accompany mm. that and so on. I and mean, having been a trainer myself, the lack of power resources in the typical training center could be quite restricting. Exactly, and the, the systems, the training systems, could be quite complicated. Some of them requires thousands of VMs just to get going, mm. right? So. In Ravello, we try to um, fix this problem um, by allowing easy uh, cloning of the VMs to different regions and different cloud providers mm -hmm. that supports different regions. Uh, also, so this is one challenge we had to overcome while thinking about our storage architecture or our Ravello storage layer. And another thing is when, once the training starts, the trainee or the trainer wants the VMs to start boot immediately, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. they, they don't care that they were originally uploaded to the US or something like that, and somewhere like that, and they will now need to copy terabytes of data to the uh, desired location. Particularly if they've got thousands of virtual machines, it's going to be tens of terabytes. Of and, course. And the students need a good, fast user interface, so they want those VMs to be nice and close to where the students are. Right, and they don't want to come three days in advance to download all the data, right? So what we did in Ravello, we built some sort of an abstraction layer with our own file system. We call it CloudFS, mm -hmm. which actually helps us to start the VMs immediately and fetch data ongoing from remote regions. And we have all sorts of optimizations to do it um, in efficient way, in an efficient way. So user will not have to wait for the VMs to actually start the booting. So the, the VM starts up before it's being copied to wherever it's executing, just parts of it right. need to be pulled. Uh, right. We, we have many optimizations. One, one of such is the, our prefetch process, which runs on the hypervisor and downloads data in the background to, mm -hmm. to help uh, accelerating uh, the future use. So launch, yeah. Yeah. So this is just one optimization out of out of many, and we also cache the data and so on to mm -hmm. to avoid the the cost of bringing the same blocks again and again from remote locations. And by that we can we solve both of the challenges together. We can boot immediately, and we can run the VM anywhere on any cloud and on any region. We store the data in the cloud's object storage. Okay, this is a concept that means that it's just a big uh, bucket of bytes. You can mm. put there anything you want, and this is accessible globally and efficiently, hopefully. So we put the data there, and then we fetch only the parts we need during the runtime, and it helps us to be uh, available globally. So yes. you must be breaking the large virtual machine up into lots and lots of little objects in order to be able to manage that tearing, and, and right. you're sharding the objects out so that they're, they're distributed in different places and you can cache them more easily as smaller units. Right, of course. And what we, what we also do is when the user finally decided to save the snapshot of the VM, mm. we upload to the cloud only the delta, only the diff from the previous write. So we don't need to upload terabytes of data to the same location where the VM is. Mm. And the VM, it, it creates such a, a, like a chain of uh, files that are mm -hmm. connected to each other. Each file contains more data and the r more recent changes. And when the VM starts, it reads only the data it needs from all the pieces of the files. Right. So, right. so that's quite a lot of smart in, in that um, structure. And yeah. we were talking also before that, that that object storage is not just in one place. It's not just a single object store somewhere. It's actually also 
spread. Right. The, it has many endpoints in every region, most of the public clouds. And what we do is we store the base image um, when, whenever, wherever the user wants to upload it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then we just, uh, cop we just upload the, the new writes, the, the diff, we mm -hmm. call it, um, to the same location where the VM was started. So if this uh, training organization wants to do training in Australia and they set it up the VMs with some configurations and they installed some components on it, so when they save the VMs, the upload would be very quickly, very quick, sorry. And when the VM would start again, most of the relevant data would be accessible. Already be local. Locally. Um, we also have many optimizations that copy data in the background from one region to another to avoid the cost of going to uh, very remote regions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all of this is really sophisticated underneath. It's what I like to refer to as, as advanced simplicity, where there is incredibly complex things going on underneath so that the consumer doesn't have to care about it. They just provision a virtual machine and say, I want to start it up in that region, please. Right, since we need to, uh, we, we had to do optimizations to, uh, to uh, uh, balance between uh, latency and throughput and do it in averagely for all the clouds because we want to support every region and every cloud. So we had to choose st strategies that would fit most of the clouds in an average uh, way. So the data would be fetched in the most efficient way. So we had to do some research to understand what's the optimal block size to fetch mm -hmm. from the cloud in each call and many other small details. It definitely sounds like there's a huge amount of complexity underneath mm -hmm. the, the storage system here and uh, quite a so <laughs> very sophisticated uh, environment. Well, thank you again, Amit, for uh, teaching us a little bit about the things we don't actually need to know about mm -hmm. underneath the Ravello platform. Keep watching for more of the videos of the V Brown Bag Build Day here with Ravello.